So I watched over 500 minutes of Brian Dean's videos to find his nine best SEO tips. And make sure you watch until the end because most people ignore SEO tip number seven. Let's dive right in. Number one, optimize for organic CTR. Some recommendations from Brian are number one, use parentheses and brackets. Number two, use crooked numbers or just numbers in general. For example, don't say 10 when you can say 13. And this applies to every number you're using, including percentages. Instead of a 30% increase, you should say a 31.7% increase. And this interrupts patterns because it's abnormal, but effective. And the cool part is that Brian practices what he preaches because 60% of his videos include at least one number. Number three, use title modifiers like best, top, fast, new, or the year. And now let's move on to the next actionable SEO tip from Brian Dean, which is number two, promote, promote, promote. So promoting your content assets came in a close second as far as what Brian mentioned the most in his videos. And the truth is you can create what you deem as epic content, but without promotion, it's dead in the water. Every asset you create needs eyeballs to achieve the performance you're looking for. For example, in the context of creating content for Google SEO, you need backlinks to not only rank, but maintain your rankings. And you can really only get backlinks in two ways. You either buy them or perform manual outreach. Brian is a big fan of outreach and mentions it countless times throughout his videos. But more specifically, Brian recommends personalized outreach emails. So here are a few techniques he recommends for scoring more backlinks. Number one, broken link building. Brian recommends two versions of broken link building. The first is traditional broken link building. Here's how it works. First, download the Check My Links Chrome extension, which allows you to check any page for broken links. Second, go to Google and search your keyword plus resources. Next, open a page and scan the page using Check My Links. And then if you find a broken link, here's the outreach email Brian recommends. The second version of broken link building is what Brian calls the moving man method. In short, you'll find dead websites and reach out to the websites linking to these dead websites. And there's a variety of ways to find these opportunities. For example, you can go to Google News and search keyword, shut down, out of business, rebranded, or chapter 11, and then do the same exact thing on Google. And you can also use a tool like Spamzilla to find quality expired domains. I'll link to my Spamzilla tutorial below this video. So once you've found a dead domain, Brian recommends this email. And then the next link building technique is none other than number two, get links through guest posting, but with a twist. You've likely heard the idea that guest posting is dead, and I personally view it as Google propaganda, but some types of guest posting really do not work. In short, you should focus your efforts on guest posting on websites that are A, relevant, and B, can actually send you referral traffic. And then you can convert this referral traffic into leads. In fact, Brian recommends creating a dedicated page for the visitors to convert them even better. So here's how to find guest posting opportunities. Go to Google and search your keyword plus write for us. Export the Google results using the data miner plugin. Copy up to 200 of the results. Open SEMrush and go to the bulk backlink analysis tool and enter the prospects. And you can then sort the prospects by traffic potential. And then you just need to send outreach emails to the best opportunities. And don't overthink this. Most websites that accept guest authors are transparent with their guidelines. So just follow the guidelines and get published. So the next link building technique Brian mentioned many times was number three, content roadshow. In short, find people who have shared or linked to content similar to yours. Simply search your target keyword, copy a competitor's URL, put it into SEMrush, and see what websites are linking to that page. Then all you need to do is send this outreach email that Brian recommends. And the truth is you may not get a link every time, but there's a good chance you'll get a share. All right, moving on to number three, create epic content. It's no surprise that creating epic content is Brian's third most recommended method. In fact, Brian created the concept of the skyscraper technique. In short, Look at the top competitors for your target keyword and then brainstorm how to create something different and better 
than what's currently ranking. And Brian built the skyscraper concept on one simple idea. People only care about the number one biggest skyscraper. So it's your job to create that and then of course, go out there and promote it. Based on Brian's video, his favorite techniques are number one, make your content more up to date. So every keyword is littered with dated search results. So just make yours more modern and up to date. Number two, make your content more in depth. Go deeper than your competitors or even consider creating unique data to better position yourself. Number three, make your content easier to read and more visually appealing. There aren't many websites that invest in content design, and this is one of the easiest ways to differentiate your content. And then once you've created your epic content, it's time to promote it. So first, identify what websites are linking to your competitors for the target keyword, then you're simply going to reach out to those same websites. Here's the exact template Brian likes to use for the skyscraper technique. All right, so now let me show you the next actionable SEO tip Brian recommends throughout his videos, which is number four, make your content visually rich. And I mentioned this earlier in the video, but most websites don't invest in content design. And the key word here is content design, not website design because everyone does that. But the best way for me to explain this is through some real life examples. Okay, so the first example I'm going to show you of really using visuals to interrupt patterns and ultimately make the content more content rich is none other than Backlinko's post about backlinks. So one thing that he does really, really well and so something that really all of us should model is that he never adds an image unless that image adds value to the content itself. So you're never going to see him just dropping a stock photo in here or some sort of photo just to interrupt a pattern for the sake of interrupting a pattern. What he's going to do is he's going to put an image in here that's a visual representation of whatever he's talking about in the content. So that image is adding value to the actual copy. And so in this case, you'll see that you know there are many, many images that are adding unique value to the actual content itself. So this is really what you should aim to do about, you know, every time that you go down the fold, there should be another pattern interrupt with an image or something of that nature. Now, of course, this is in regards to informational content, but this also applies to transactional pages. So on transactional pages, you wanna have that left-right format, you wanna be changing up the design with sections and things of that nature. But for informational content, this is the model that you should emulate is constant interrupts, constant visual changes, because it's very hard to keep people's attention. So you have to have these interrupts. So this is the first one. And this is, I would say this is the most classic format that Brian uses is this kind of, you know, really short paragraphs and then visual pattern interrupts, which are very, very useful and effective for keeping his content very engaging. The next type is just really these like kind of almost hybrid custom design pages. So this one is somewhat custom design, but not fully. So it's very similar to this one, except it has kind of a custom design up here above the fold, uh, just to make this page even more unique. So if you scroll down, very similar to the previous one, lots of pattern interrupts, and you can tell that there's a, a very specific format that Brian likes to stick to, and this is it. Really good images that add unique value to the content, and not just putting images just for the sake of images, right? Every single thing has a purpose, and he does it Really, there aren't many people that do it exceptional, you know, much better than this. Uh, oh, look at that. There I am. Well, anyway, keep going through here, and this is exactly what we should be modeling. Now, the last one I want to show you is right here on the on page SEO definitive guide. Now, this is one that he probably invested a lot into design and the user interface. But as you can tell, above the fold, very beautiful design, custom, and then he has even these nice little graphics here for these content chapters. So, Already right out of the gate, you can tell this is gonna be a really good piece of content because it's just visually appealing. I mean, how many pieces of content do you see online that go to this extent to create something that is this visually appealing? You just don't see it very often. And so people can tell when you invest in your content, it makes a big difference. And you know, people do judge a book by its cover and it actually is very, very important. So we look at this, we've got nice sections in here. You can use, you can use Generate Press to create sections like this, by the way. Uh, you don't need some fancy designer to do all this for you. In fact, you could probably build a page like this completely from scratch just using Generate Press and Generate Blocks. So just a little side note on that point. But if you look at this, once again, he's deploying his, his go-to framework of short paragraphs, 
and pattern interrupts with unique images. And so he's gonna do this throughout and then he's gonna interrupt the pattern once again with another chapter, another section. And this is just kind of the, you know, the framework that he uses and it's really, really effective. And even notice the, the subtlety here. He goes from a white background to a gray background. And just that slight change is enough to recapture attention, to interrupt the pattern just slightly, but not to the extent that it's in your face. It's just enough. It's a very subtle one, but it's very effective. So going down here, once again, I mean, this section is really visually rich. I mean, he's got a little bit of content here with a little bit of proof, uh, you know, to make this content more trustworthy and then just a nice visual and then right onto the next section. So he doesn't waste any time. And this is exactly how we should be thinking about our content. You can see this content is a, it's a real beast, right? And it's just, if you do the scroll, look at the constant interrupts. There's constant changes. Everything is different. And this is just, this particular asset here has got to be one of his best because it really, you can tell the amount of effort that went into this. And I'm speaking from experience because just getting graphics like this, like taking screenshots and putting them in, into the post, like it's very, very time consuming. So the amount of effort that he put in this post has to be, you know, at least 20, 20 hours, I would imagine. Uh, and obviously his team is doing a lot of things too, but for the most part, we're looking at maybe 20, 20 hours or more just to create this one asset. So, you know, this is just some examples to show you. And obviously I could show you other examples from other industries, but since this particular video is about Brian, I just wanted to show you the examples that he actually practices what he preaches. And you won't find really, and this isn't just in the SEO industry, you won't find really any content in any industry that's as good as Brian's. Like that's how good it is. So learn from him, model him, use what he's done here as a framework for you to create even better content. And now let's move on to the next actionable SEO tip from Backlinko, which is number five, use unorthodox keyword research techniques. So you can of course use paid tools like SEMrush to scale your keyword research. However, every SEO is using these tools as well. So how do you find untapped and uncompetitive keyword opportunities? Well, Brian recommends a variety of methods. Number one, Reddit. Okay, so finding keywords on Reddit is super simple. You just need to leverage the search function. This is really gonna be how you find keyword opportunities on any platform. And so all you need to do is go right up here and enter a keyword that you're trying to find ideas around, to build content ideas around. So in this case, we'll just do backlinks. And what we wanna do is just look for particular posts that have a lot of engagement. That's what I like to do. I like to look at the engagement levels because then it's an indication that there's already interest. We have embedded interest in here. Now, of course, if someone is asking this question, then there already is interest, but I just like to look at the ones that really have a lot of user engagement. So this one right here, you know, best ways to build backlinks, very broad topic, right? But it has 19 upvotes and 55 comments. So there's a lot of material here. So even if we open this up, yes, this broad topic might be pretty difficult to rank for, but what we can do is we can go through here and look for more granular opportunities, right? And start to look for specific things that people are talking about. So we're, you know, we see people here talking about a link from web 2.0 sites, right? So maybe we could create an asset about that. We go down here and we just start to look at these various ideas that we may find. And then we can actually build really structured content around these concepts. Because the truth is you can certainly learn from Reddit. You can certainly learn from forums, but it's much easier to read a structured piece of content and getting those steps instead of trying to like filter through this and figure it all out. So a couple things here, you know, guest posting, we could write something about guest posting, something about directories, something about blog comments. So there's a variety of things that we can talk about. And you know, this is getting downvoted because really these aren't great tactics, but that's kind of the point, right? So we're just gathering ideas here. And one thing that a lot of people don't consider is a lot of ideas are on social media before you get data on them using the traditional SEO tools. So for example, on TikTok, you could find an idea on TikTok that has like tons of visibility, but if you go and look at the search volume on SEMrush, it's gonna show virtually nothing, right? And the greatest example of this is when there was that crazy phase on TikTok about this, that particular coffee drink where you'd use instant coffee. 
and it was going absolutely viral. But then if you went to one of the SEO tools, it didn't show any volume at all, but there was huge amounts of interest in it. So this is a way for you to really jump on these trends early and get a page up so that you can rank on Google with virtually no resistance, no competition. So I recommend that at least you know 20% of your content assets target these, what I would consider more like experimental type of keywords. And this is why Brian always recommends this as well, because they're usually very low competition and most SEOs aren't paying attention to these at all. So definitely use Reddit and go through here. Maybe even just set like a, a weekly cadence where you go and just check out and find out what people are talking about just to stay on top of trends and so that you can be a first mover on your content. The next technique is to number two, use Quora. Okay, so now I'm on Quora and all you need to do is once again, just use the search function, put your primary keyword in there and then we're gonna go ahead and search. And then what you can do is you can of course just look at it as it's already set up and find all kinds of opportunities. Once again, looking at what has the most engagement, what has the most follows, because that's typically an indication that it's a popular topic. So we don't really wanna write about things that don't have any type of validation whatsoever. So either validation either comes through search volume or it comes from user engagement on these platforms. But what you can do is actually look, you can look as recent as past hour to get more relevant ideas or even just look past month. And you can start to see what are the questions that are being asked currently, not you know seven years ago, what really matters right now. And you can jump on these trends like we were talking about with Reddit and create an asset that's very structured and much, much more consumable and actionable for the user. The next keyword research technique Brian recommends is to use searches related to on Google, YouTube, and Amazon. The next one is just to simply enter the target keyword here into Google, and there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. First, you can just hit space and find out what are the suggested searches that Google is giving you. And you can do this on more than Google. You can do it on YouTube, you can do it on Amazon, you can do it on Udemy. Anything with the search function will likely have the suggested searches. So this is one technique. And then of course you can even go back here and add an A and start looking at different things here, right? Different types of things that are showing up. So that's one option. Then go down here and you can also look at searches related, okay? These related searches here, and you can start to go deeper into this as well. So the next technique is to use answer the public. So to use answer the public, it's very simple. Just go in here, enter your target keyword and start the search. And then once it's done, I like to click on the data and then you have all of these opportunities for creating content around a lot of untapped ideas you'll often find. So you're looking through here to find these ideas that no one else is creating content on, and then you can be a first mover and you can take advantage of these. And I found that just creating content around these ideas on Answer the Public can be really, really useful. Now just be careful though, make sure you run these ideas through a tool like SEMrush to make sure that the keyword difficulty isn't super crazy. With that said though, sometimes you'll find that the keyword difficulty might be super high for one of these, but when you actually examine the search results, if you see that the top 10 isn't actually, isn't actually built around that keyword, then the KD metric actually isn't as useful because what you can do is you can win by creating a hyper relevant piece of content, extremely relevant, and you won't need as many links to rank because Google really cares what they care about the most is showing the most relevant content. So if you can create the most relevant asset around one particular really granular idea, you're gonna perform really well. And the last technique is to use none other than exploding topics, which is Brian's new tool. Really the goal here is just to find ideas that are currently trending upward that no one else has really jumped on quite yet. So if you're in the SEO space and you saw Core Web Vitals, this would be a really good idea to jump on this before all the other SEO blogs jump on it, right? But you can also even just use their search function. Go into here and type backlinks and you're gonna get some related searches here that you can use. So we can just type, use backlink in this example and just see how this is trending up, right? And this can even be used as just validating your keywords as well, making sure that they're trending upward and not trending down, simple as that. All right, so now let's move on to the seven actionable SEO tip from Brian Dean, which is don't forget to update and optimize your SEO content. The truth is some people think once they publish, their work is done forever. And this is wrong on two fronts. First, you can't publish and pray. Every asset you wanna rank in Google will likely need promotion. In other words, backlinks. Secondly, content gets stale and 
often needs to be reworked, refreshed, and re-optimized. And obviously you should try to publish the best content possible, but you should also think about your content like a SaaS company thinks about its product. It's common with SaaS startups to create an MVP or minimum viable product. In short, they're creating a simple version of their product to get market feedback as soon as possible. And they can then use real customer feedback to improve the product. And that's how you should approach your content. Get it into the market and see how Google responds to it. And if it lands in the top 30, you should acquire backlinks. And then once it's on the second page, you should re-optimize the UX and the UI. And then just continue to acquire backlinks until it ranks number one. But then after six to 12 months, you need to revisit that content and refresh it again, even if it's doing well. The truth is that the job Job is never done because you're always going to have competitors who are trying to beat you on a daily basis. So the way to maintain your rankings is continual link building. You want to have that steady growth going upward and content upgrades and refreshes. All right, so let's move on to the bonus actionable SEO tip from Brian Dean, which is don't overthink on-page SEO. So Brian keeps his on-page SEO process super simple. Here it is. Use short URLs, front load your keyword in the title, Add the keyword in your URL and first sentence, optimize your page's loading speed, add external links to quality sources, add internal links, and sprinkle some keyword variations throughout the content. So if you just follow Brian's simple on-page SEO recommendations, you'll probably be ahead of 80% of websites. And if you wanna add some advanced techniques, I do recommend integrating NLP, which is natural language processing, optimization, using a tool like Surfer. Here's how to do it. Okay, so for this example, I just went ahead and put in bounce rate, which is a keyword that Brian is ranking exceptionally well for on his website. And so what you're gonna see here is Brian is doing really, really well, okay? So if we look at the overall content score, then this is really just a score of how well this page is optimized. Brian is easily number one, right? There's no one that even matches except for Hotjar, which is at about a 90, but there's only one other than Brian that is at that level. So this makes sense that Brian would be performing really, really well. And if we look at the authority levels, at least with surfers readings, it's all pretty equal, right? And with the exception of Google, you're gonna have a hard time beating Google for a keyword that they wanna rank for, of course. So, but the fact that he's ranking number two is, is saying a lot because he's even beating Wikipedia and he's beating all these other authority sites. So this 85 here is very, very good. Now, if we go in here to the audit, we'll go ahead and take a look. And it's probably because he's hit all the most important points here, right? So he hasn't hit every single thing. He could probably be, let's say, a little more aggressive just by saying bounce rate a couple more times here and there. But for the most part, you know, it's you start to split hairs at a certain point. So he's really hit all the ones that he needs to hit. You don't need to hit every single variation here when it comes to surfer. But if we look at this, we'll see that, you know, there's, there is opportunity, but he's hit the most important ones mainly for his particular page. So, and then if we look at the word count, clearly he's the number one, right? So Everyone else is just trying to model him, and he's clearly the best just for this one keyword. It's not even close. And then there's some other metrics here. You can look at loading speed. He's doing well there, very, very fast. And then this one here could be improved slightly, but once again, you're splitting hairs relative to the competitors for this keyword. So this is the level of optimization that you should be going for. And when you look at the when you look at Surfer and you're trying to figure out, okay, what what target should I hit? It should really just be that you have the most optimized page relative to the competition. So in this case, everyone is optimized really, really well, like for the most part, like 80, you know, 80 plus percent of the results are optimized well. In a lot of search results and for a lot of keywords, you're not gonna see this level of optimization. You're just not. It's gonna be much lower. It's gonna be more in the 40s, 50s. So for you to beat your competitors, I just try to get up into the green zone. So I think the green zone starts at about 70. So if that's you know our bare minimum, that's where we wanna go. But ultimately, we just really wanna beat the top competitor who is ranking for this keyword. So those are Brian Dean's top SEO tips from his awesome YouTube channel. So please like this video and subscribe because I have many new videos coming out very soon. Thank you so much for watching.